हेलो एवरी वन चैप्टर फोर मटीरियल्स मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स इन द पार्ट वन ऑफ दिस वीडियो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स नाउ लेट एस एक्सप्लेन दिस चैप्टर फर्दर वी हैव अ सीरीज ऑफ डिफरेंट मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स नाउ लेट एस स्टडी देअ केमिकल सिम्बल्स and chemical properties so first of all i'll explain you the chemical symbols which are for hydrogen we use h helium h e lithium l i beryllium b e boron b carbon c nitrogen capital n oxygen o then fluorine f neon n e sodium एम ए मैग्नीशियम एम जी फॉस्फोरस पी सल्फर एस क्लोरिन सी एल एन आर्गन ए आर डियर चिल्ड्रन नाउ लेट एस स्टडी दीज एलिमेंट्स फर्दर एंड टॉक अबाउट द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सो द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स मेटल्स रिएक्ट विद ऑक्सीजन वॉटर एयर एंड एसिड्स वेन आयरन कम्स इन कॉन्टेक्ट विद ऑक्सीजन एंड मॉइस्चर इट बिकम्स रस्टी ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव सीन द रस्ट ऑन आयरन ऑब्जेक्ट्स इट मीन्स इट कन्वर्ट्स इन टू इट्स ऑक्साइड सिमिलरली वेन वी बर्न मैग्नीशियम रिबर्न इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन it converts into magnesium oxide when the ashes of magnesium oxide are dissolved in water if we dissolve these ashes into water it converts into magnesium hydroxide now to check the property of magnesium hydroxide means whether it is acidic or basic we can check with the help of a litmus paper you will observe that red litmus paper will turn into blue with the help of this activity we are able to understand that metals react with oxygen and they form basic oxides now let's see the reaction of metals with water metals when react with water they form basic oxides and heat is also released let's understand it with the help of an activity take a beaker of 250 ml fill it half with cold water now carefully cut a small piece of sodium metal make it dry with the help of a filter paper keep it in the folds of filter paper make it dry now place it in a piece of cotton and put it in the beaker half filled with cold water students you will observe that sodium reacts violently with cold water and it immediately catches fire now if you touch the beaker from outside you will feel that the beaker is warm if we test this solution for its its acidic or its basic nature with the help of a litmus paper we will observe that red litmus paper turn blue it shows the basic nature of this solution it means metals react with water and they form which type of oxide basic oxide children you have observed that sodium reacts violently with water that's why it is kept in kerosene oil it's not stored in water but children we should remember that all metals do not react vigorously with water like sodium another metal like lead copper gold silver they do not react with water at all these metals don't show any reaction with water now let's study reaction of metals with 
acids. So for this we are going to perform an activity to explain that metals react with acids and produce hydrogen gas. So the activity is take 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid in a test tube. Take 20 ml of soap solution in a beaker. Now put some zinc granules in the test tube. So we have taken dilute sulfuric acid and soap solution and put some zinc granules in a test tube. We observe that the reaction has started and some bubbles are formed. Now pass these bubbles in the soap solution with the help of a delivery tube. Bring a burning matchstick near the bubbles coming out of the soap solution. We'll see that a popping sound occurs when the gas present in the soap bubbles comes in contact with the burning matchstick. So as you can see here, so this reaction shows the presence of hydrogen gas. Now we conclude that metals react with bases to form hydrogen gas and release heat. Let's understand it with the help of an activity. Take a test tube and make a fresh solution of sodium hydroxide. To make it we can add 4 to 5 pellets of sodium hydroxide in 5 ml of water in the test tube. Your fresh solution of sodium hydroxide is now ready. Now put a piece of aluminium foil in this test tube. You will see that the reaction has started. Now bring a burning matchstick near the mouth of the test tube. You will again hear the popping sound. It means the gas produced here is hydrogen gas because Occurring of popping sound when a gas reacts with burning matchstick is a characteristic feature of hydrogen gas. Now let's see the reaction of known metals with water. Generally known metals do not react with water though they may be very reactive in air. Such known metals are stored in water. For example, phosphorus is a very reactive non-metal. It catches fire if exposed to air. So to prevent the contact of phosphorus with atmospheric oxygen, it is stored in water. Therefore, non-metals, they are very less reactive as compared to metals. Now let's describe about the next property that non-metals do not react with acids. Let's do an activity to understand this. Take a little amount of sulfur powder in a test tube. Add some drops of dilute sulfuric acid in it. We'll observe that there will be no change in the sulfur powder. It means that non-metals do not react with acids. Students now will discuss about displacement reaction. To understand displacement reaction, let's observe this activity. Take 5 beakers of 100 ml capacity each and label them as A, B, C, D and E. Now take about 50 ml of water in each beaker. In beaker we put in beaker 1 in beaker A we put copper sulfate and zinc granules in beaker B we put copper sulfate and iron nails in beaker C we put zinc sulfate and copper turnings in beaker D we put ferrous sulfate and copper turnings and in beaker E we put zinc sulfate and iron nails. Now keep these beakers 
undisturbed for some time. After some time, we'll observe different changes occur in these beakers. First of all, let's observe beaker A. In this beaker, zinc displaces copper from copper sulfate solution. That's why the blue color of copper sulfate disappears and a powdery red mass of copper is deposited at the bottom of the beaker. As you can see here, it means zinc has displaced copper. Similarly, in beaker B, the blue color of copper sulfate turns into green. In this beaker, ferrous sulfate is formed at the place of copper sulfate because iron displaces copper from its salt solution. You will observe that there is no change in beaker C, D and E. Why? Because beaker C and E has zinc sulfate solution and zinc is more reactive than copper and iron. And a more reactive metal can replace a less reactive metal. But a less reactive metal cannot replace more reactive metal. That's why copper and iron can not displace zinc from its salt solution. Whereas in beaker D, we have ferrous sulfate and copper turnings. As iron is more reactive than copper, so copper cannot displace iron from its salt solution. Clear to everyone? So a more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal. And a less reactive metal cannot displace a more reactive metal. So we conclude from this activity that displacement reaction is a chemical reaction in which a more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal from its salt solution. Now let us move ahead and discuss about the chemical properties of known metals. When known metals react with oxygen they form oxides which are acidic in nature and these oxides turn blue litmus paper into red. Now to understand this let's take an activity. So take a small amount of powdered sulfur in a spoon. Heat it on a flame. As soon as the sulfur starts burning. Now introduce the spoon into a gas jar or a glass tumbler. Now cover the tumbler to observe that the gas produced does not escape. Remove the spoon after some time. Add a small quantity of water into the tumbler and quickly replaces the lid. Shake the tumbler well to dissolve sulfur dioxide gas in water. Now you can see that sulfur dioxide dissolve in water to form sulfurous acid solution. Now let us test this sulfurous acid solution with a blue litmus paper. It turns blue litmus into red. So what does this show? It shows that it is an acidic in nature. So known metals react with oxygen to form acidic oxides. So with the help of this activity we have come to an end. Now let us discuss uses of metals and after that uses of non-metals. Now metals they are used in manufacturing of beakers. So many uses are there. So let us discuss them one by one. They can be used in the manufacturing of vehicles, aeroplanes, satellites, different industrial equipments, utensils and water boilers. So these all are the uses of metals. Now let's see the uses of non-metals. Where they are used. 
oxygen which is a non metal is it is essential for all living organisms for breathing non metals like nitrogen and phosphorus are used in fertilizers to enhance the growth of plants and increase the fertility of soil so they are used in fertilizers and manures chlorine a non metal that is used in di to disinfectant water as it kills germs non metals are also used in the manufacture of crackers matchsticks red poison dyes and so many other uses so that's all for this chapter thank you for watching this video thank you so much